So, what up, guys? What's up? Sky. What's up? My d <laughs> Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> Never ask a girl what's up. She just get that reply. What, your p So funny. <laughs> but anyway, oh, it's funny how I haven't done this before, but it really, really kind of annoys me a little bit. Is um, start stop technology. Does it actually really work? And when I say it does it really work, I mean, well, like. <sighs> Cars seem to be getting more annoying nowadays with all this technology and more unreliable too. So start stop technology, is it just something else to go wrong? Cars and bikes are a bit different though. I mean for one, I don't, I don't recall any sort of normal motorbike that has it, but there are mopeds with it. Uh, the first being the Honda PCX. As the first to have the start stop technology and it really works and it works way really really well because obviously there's no battery start to, there's no start motor to do it that runs off the bloody cvt instead to run the engine so you actually have what's called zero stop starts on zero and soon as you twist so you have instant throttle instead and it works, and it works perfectly. But with the cars, you can't have that. So all it actually does then is uh, you start it up, and uh, it fires with the start motor and the battery. There's a lot of problems doing that. I mean, for one, you're going to wear out the start motor. Poor guy. Hmm. Um, two. If you work out the start motor, you can wear out the. And the problem is, if you do with the battery. Batteries only fully work if you keep, if you buy like a car that does, runs around town only, right, the battery never gets fully charged and it wears out the battery like that properly quickly, really quickly, in fact. But if you buy, but if it runs for 15, 20 miles, whatever, without having this between charge, between starting it, the battery works fine eight, nine years later. So it starts off technology. You're doing that 15, 20 times every drive. You're going to wear out the charge on the battery. You're going to have to keep recharging it using the engine. I'm not quite sure start stop technology really works. Um, obviously, uh, the, the biggest, another big problem is because you're using fuel to recharge it, is it necessarily saving your fuel? Diesels, it tends to save fuel. It, it's been proven that it actually does save quite a lot of fuel. Um, my, aunt, my aunt and uncle got a Mercedes um, uh, uh, E220. Now, they had a C180 diesel before. And then they got an E220 with the blue start stop. And they say they're saving a lot, a far more fuel now than what they were doing with the old 180. Now, the 180 was. Obviously, uh, less powerful, not less powerful, and a small engine. But because they don't start stop, they'll use more fuel. All right. But the admin, but at the same time, petrol engines don't save the fuel, really. Not really. Bigger engines save the fuel with the start stop. Because um, obviously, if you sit idling with a 3 litre using 
three times more petrol if you're idling with a one litre. And then there's a the bigger one. Right, for an engine to operate perfectly and to not wear out and not to get damaged or whatever, um, the engine has to run with the oil in the engine. Um, build oil pressure up. And... Um, it's like, basically, if you're starting stopping the engine, as soon as you stop the engine, you lose the oil pressure. So you now need to wait, say like if you want to fully rev the engine, let's say you want to go over and take something and you've been stopped in traffic for ages, the engine's been off. And the engine only has to switch off for a couple of minutes and all that oil falls down. For a couple of seconds even, quite a lot of the oil comes back down again. Now, the thing is, is that an engine will do its most damage when you first start it. Well, when it's cold anyway. But when it's warm, already warm or hot even, then it's fine. But you still can't fully rev the engine um, if the oil pressure hasn't been built up. Especially if the oil hasn't, the pressure hasn't been built up. So it takes around three, five, seven minutes or so. Build the oil pressure. But uh, of course, there's no oil pressure, and you rev the engine to the red line, you do damage. So that's kind of my point, really. The, the, the other thing, the final thing is obviously reliability. I mean, the thing is, it's a stop, 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 stop technology stops working right Very, it's all right if the engine if it fails to cut the engine out but let's say it cuts the engine but let's say there's a lead missing so it can't start the engine let's say one of the connections is rode on the clutch pedal that connects it like on this even even this is like eroded so it's hard to start the bike you're gonna get really annoyed with it when it doesn't actually start the engine anymore. And it's just another inconvenience. Some people like it because it saves fuel, others dislike it because it's so unreliable and it's so annoying to live with. It's a pain in the arse. So that's my two cents on bloody start stop technology, guys. Uh, as long as it's not very positive. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if I had to start stop technology on my car, I'd instantly take it down to the garage, get get it unplugged and removed, and make it so it runs normally. Because it'll just do my head in every time I come to a tra set of traffic lights and there's no engine. The final reason why I wouldn't have it as well is because how can something that's tw 10 years old and lost half of its power, a 2 litre Mitsubishi, me mums, right, outrun a freaking brand new Audi at the, li at the lights? Shall I tell you why? Because it was, it was, cause the Audi was still waiting for its engine to start. And, uh, you know, it's fine with brand new engines, but after a couple of years, when you're waiting for the engines to go eh, 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 every time it lights. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, just get rid of it. Causes more problems than it, it solves. Oh well. See you guys later.